Welcome to Red Ice Creations Radio. This is Henrik Palmgren and this is our internet talk radio program. And yes, we are recording from Sweden's west coast. You can tune in to our radio show every Thursday and Sunday through our website redicecreations.com. And if that isn't enough for you, well, then you definitely don't want to miss out on our subscriber section where we have a growing archive of very interesting interviews available for you. Check out our website redicecreations.com for much more information about that. We also have a very active news section on the site, updated uh, almost every day with interesting and important research material and uh, news stories from around this planet and uh, beyond. And today we have with us on the program Ben Fairhall from Battling the Behemoth. And if you have been following along our news for a while, you probably have come across a few of Ben's excellent postings. Uh, Mr. Farrell has two blogs that we are going to talk more about today. Uh, one, as I said, is The Daily Behemoth, and uh, the other, um, as I mentioned uh, in, the, in the intro, is Battling the Behemoth. Uh, and I guess the easiest way is to go to ben-fairhall.blogspot.com. Uh, that is the Battling Bohemoth site, and from there you'll also find links to his other blog, The Daily Bohemoth. Uh, and it's always a pleasure and uh, interesting to have a new voice with us on the program and to hear from someone who is out there following along in the wonderful craziness, as it were, uh, that goes on around the world and uh, contribute their own analysis and perspective on it all. And uh, Ben seems to be interested in, in a lot of different topics, uh, everything from uh, conspiracy to the occult, uh, from secret societies to symbolism, uh, history, the ancient world, rituals and uh, pop culture and synchronicities and a lot, lot more. So it's uh, a pleasure to have Ben with us today. So let's say welcome to the program. Very nice uh, to have you with us. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you, Henrik. It's nice to be here. Excellent. It's great to have you. You know, I just wanted to uh, ask you, since I know that you are in the uh, uh, vicinity, I guess, of, of London uh, at the time yes. of this recording, we are uh, having the ongoing concerts around the world, the 7 we 7. Are, yes. Yeah, the live Earth SOS global warming <laughs> event, as it were. Yeah. Uh, have you been able to see something of it yet, either from the web or from the TV? Uh, I know that you guys over there in uh, London have one of these uh, events, right? Uh, yes, we have the um, this sort of uh, you know um, sort of father of them all over at Wembley Stadium. Uh, yes, with um, Mr. Al Gore himself in person, I believe, comparing that. So that should be fun. Ah, so he is actually there at uh, in London. Uh, well, I'm not I'm not completely sure about that, but but I think he is, and um, you know so certainly I think he's going to be dropping in at some point. So. Yeah, he might be flying around the globe, I guess, and <laughs> visiting uh, all the places. <laughs> Uh, yes, which would be rather ironic, considering what the uh, concerts are supposed to be raising awareness <laughs> of, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. quite funny. Yeah, we actually looked at, I looked a little bit at the feeds, uh, you know, from uh, yes. from Amazon, um, and and you know, a lot of it's interesting because it's a lot of uh, lights, as it were, and it's a lot of yep. you know conundrum in a way of, of uh, this entire event but I realize it in one sense because it's it is about the raising the awareness and so forth but any, anyway <laughs> that's it's nice to have that uh, going on you know um, sure. one thing I also wanted to ask you a little bit about um, we had the recent uh, kind of bomb mm. scare I guess over in London uh, what was it last last week uh, how are things uh, over yes, there last Saturday last Saturday that's right how, um, how are things over there is it scary well, on the streets <laughs> um no, not at all. Um, so, you know, no more scary than London um, usually is, which, um, you know, isn't particularly scary sort of around, um, you know, my parts of London, which is which is sort of southeast, uh, southwest London. All right. OK. Um, you know, really, I mean, I think, um, you know, what needs to be said about that was just how convenient um, it was in terms of the timing of it. I mean, it was, uh, you know, I'm so beautifully synchronized yet again with um, uh, uh, seven seven, of course, which is, you know, obviously, uh, I'm where we are today. Yeah, you know, I'm right. speaking to you. I'm speaking to you right now on the glorious seventh, and I'm still here, which means my uh, um, sort of end time um, fears have not yet materialized. <laughs> okay, well, that's that's good. You know, uh, well, t tell us about that. What what uh, what was that in, in regards to seven seven or and your end times fear? Tell us about it. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, really, I'm 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 sort of kidding you there, but um, <laughs> you know, uh, but certainly I've been very aware of the impending 777 
celebrations, festivities, and it's quite clear that there have been um, things, uh, should we say, lined up um, for this period. And I, I personally think that the sort of staged um, sort of terror drill, which went off last weekend in London, mm. um, you know, I think that was one of them. Mm. Okay, and uh, and uh, I guess even the uh, initiation, uh, as it were, of Gordon Brown kind of uh, dovetails with this a bit. Well, know. absolutely, it does. Of course, it does. Yeah. Yeah. You so know, um, you know, sort of normally when um, sort of somebody new steps into the helm like that, of course, people are, you know, sort of feeling optimistic. It's a time of dreams and hope that things are going to get better, isn't it? <laughs> That's um, right. Sheesh. Absolutely. So straight away, you see, um, so that has to be scotched. That has to be um, that has to be quashed. Hmm. Um, so instead, what we have now um, is this ongoing um, sort of campaign of fear, um, which is really what um, you know, um, sort of modern day um, sort of post 9/11 politics really um, has been all about. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that yeah. they are are they successful in, in in that regard, or is there only people who manage to you know break through the regular media nonsense and and read a bit of their own or do you think people are actually are more scared now uh i don't know i don't know whether people are more scared actually i i um you know sort of my sense is that they aren't mm. I th- which is a good thing i think also increasingly people are beginning um sort of to um you know maybe wake up mm. you know more generally i mean i think that the you know i think that the you know general um sort of feeling in the country and i think it's global as well as is that people are understanding that maybe politicians aren't necessarily our best friends after all. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Except Al Gore then, of course. Apart from Al Gore. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, you yeah, know, well, uh, yeah. Mm, yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah, well, he's he's a he's a sort of, uh, you know, sort of charismatic half uh, charismatic kind of character who is being, you know, um, so, um, sort of groomed for um, near greatness. Mm. Um Uh, but I um, I haven't got very much more to say on Al Gore. So no, <laughs> we can leave him. <laughs> yeah, we'll let, let him let continue with his concerts. Uh, yes, indeed. Anyway, you know, uh, I want to kind of dive in and, and talk a little bit about your your blogs or your websites. Uh, uh, tell us a little about when when all of this began for you, battling the behemoth. Um, tell us about the name and and when it started and so forth. Um, uh, yeah, well, the actual blog itself started now almost exactly one year ago, maybe 13 months now. Um, yeah, um, um, which is when I first obtained my laptop and PC and really had any interest in sort of, uh, you know, Internet type stuff at all or computers. I mean, I'm really not that way inclined, particularly. Right. Um, um, hence, my blog is really quite. Uh, simple, fairly, um, you know, uh, um, a sort of non-flashy, primitive kind of um, stuff. It's just information. It's just what I write. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it, uh, <clears throat> I mean, that's what it's all about, the the content. And uh, what, it, Yes, it is. It is, yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about, um, you know, what, what kind of... Uh, well, tell us a few of the themes that you that you seem you know it seems like you have kind of a red thread as as it were on your blog and that you follow yes. and what kind of sparked your interest in these subjects from the beginning what what made you continue on this road so to speak sure um, yeah well that's a uh, an interesting question I mean that would probably you know take us back many years um, sort of back to when I was. Um, you know, growing up, um, you know, when I was sort of studying theology later in life, um, which is kind of an interesting sort of arc I've taken, I suppose, going from somewhere that might be regarded as reasonably sort of academically um, sort of excellent um, sort of into the um, freakish and fringe world of conspiracy. Mm. And how did that happen? I think fundamentally, you know, I, I've always been someone who regards himself as being on the outside. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that's, you know, almost essential when you're dealing with conspiratorial, th- um, you know, memes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm sort of somebody who is the advertiser's wet dream. You know, I'm sort of generally isn't going to be interested in um, sort of globalist conspiracy theories. Mm-hmm. You know, um, he or she is um, sort of too busy, um, you know, sort of taking their Kodak moments and, um, uh-huh. you know, um, having fun. Yeah. <laughs> 
And, you know, sort of fun, having fun and all those sort of things didn't really happen to me when I was growing up. And so I think I think naturally I, I was someone who was inclined um, sort of towards this, I suppose, sort of slightly darker view of humanity. Mm. Um, but at the same time, I regard it as as actually very optimistic. I think that we're forging something which, you know, um, so has uh, which, you know, sort of really has a great deal of hope involved. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I. I and I think that's important, and certainly I try and emphasize that in um, my work. Yeah, um, yeah. you mentioned uh, <laughs> theology. Do you think that yeah. this have uh, kind of also sparked your interest in looking at, um, you know, not only religious themes but uh, uh, more a- ancient rituals? And and even uh, would you say that it's correct to assume that you, you know there is an idea here that uh, many of the things that have been ongoing in the past let's say like ritualistic behavior and religious uh, movements and so forth that this is uh, how should i say it re reenacted or playing out again in our modern v- uh, world through uh, through the pop culture um Yes, that is certainly something which I've looked at, and that's you know sort of uh, sort of several researchers have. I mean, just a couple of things which spring to mind immediately would be looking at the sort of uh, sort of stuff that happened around 2003 with the invasion of Iraq and so on, and mm-hmm. um, and all of those historical correspondences between um, uh, uh, Saddam Hussein and um, sort of King Nebuchadnezzar and so on, but. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, sort of stuff like that, I don't really want to sort of dwell on right now, if you don't mind, just because it's sort of too much detail. Um, sure, you know, sure. n- you know, now I just kind of want to talk really generally and just um, sort of flow in that organic way, if that's if that's going to be possible. Absolutely. Sounds good. You know, uh, right. um, how about uh, talking a little bit about your uh, about your latest article? We have a, a fantastic one up there right now that I uh, just linked up on the on the, our website, redeyescreations.com. And. Uh, that dives into a little bit about this concept about uh, valis. I don't know if that's pronounced uh, correctly. Uh, uh, yeah, valis. Valis. Yeah. Well. Um, okay. Uh, you know, what can I say about that apart from what's already up there? I guess. Um, <laughs> Tell us about I mean, valis first and the connection to Philip K. Dick. Yeah. Well, it was a sort of. Um, so far as I'm aware, it was a kind of supercomputer type encounter which um, he had in his. Um, uh, a Californian um, flat where he was living at the time. Mm. And it was a a stunning and extremely frightening um, um, sort of downloading of information that just happened to him. It happened to him in a totally unwilled fashion. He wasn't expecting it. Um, it came out of the blue. Mm. And this um, and and and, um, you know, sort of like I say, it was a um, sort of radical um, uh, sort of burst of stuff which he did not previously know. Mm. And um, if I can uh, sort of take that back with my own research and so on, mm-hmm. you know, I find, um, you know, I'm sort of one of the reasons why I, I struggle talking about um, sort of my work is really sort of largely because, um, you know, um, so most of the stuff I do sort of comes to me, you know, very, very naturally. Mm-hmm. Um, it comes to me sometimes in sleep, in dreams, or sometimes I might just sort of sit down, start writing, start um, you know, start tapping away, start finding some connections on Google and um, um, and other sites, Wikipedia and so on. And, mm-hmm. you know, lo, it just it just pours out of me. Hmm. So it's hard really sometimes now um, talking about the stuff that I write um, sure. only because in some ways I don't feel entirely responsible for it. Ah, <laughs> um, isn't that? And, and, and uh, if I may, isn't that a little bit of the connection actually that you did in now your latest article talking about uh, if you were, for instance, to tie this together with uh, the concept of, of, you know, as it were, downloading information and you yes. even bring in a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, the stuff, for instance, uh, that David Icke apparently went through when he was down he in cer- Peru. Yes, you know? he certainly did. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, um, yes. Um, oh, yeah. You know, absolutely. I mean, something quite interesting possibly happened to me maybe two years ago. Um, when I really started uh, getting involved in this stuff, I mean, uh, having said that, I can't put my finger on what that specifically was. But, you know, I'm, I'm sort of looking back at it. I do find it strange that now my whole life is entirely um, I'm, uh, I'm not consumed with with, um, you know, sort of research and um, and this sort of field. And I expect it's probably um, sort of something which you can relate to. Yeah, 